for those studying Pearson LXL GCSE option surgery and treatment on the Western Front, Anglia is delighted to offer a series of itineraries endorsed by LXL that actually put the whole thing into context. From dealing with a soldier that's wounded on the battlefield, going all the way back through a set chain that includes his own doctor, a regimental aid post, then an advanced dressing station, a casualty clearing station, and then eventually back to the huge uh, base hospitals on the French coast. And then back to the United Kingdom. There are over 170,000 Commonwealth War Graves Commission headstones all over the UK from soldiers who make it all the way back and eventually succumb to their wounds. As part of the new GCSE syllabus for edXL, you're required to study a historical environment. We chose to do the historical environment of medicine and surgery in World War I. We're at Bayernwald, a German position from 1915-16. It's, as you can see, reconstructed on the site of the original trenches. The point for us to come here is less to do with the traditional thing about bombing along and the guy with the Mills bomb running along and how trenches are constructed and less about that race to the sea that kind of aspect than it is about how do you get hurt in here? What might they do to your eardrums? Okay, so you've got the potential for percussion injuries in here. What we've just run with group is trying to get to the difficulties of one platoon coming back, having failed to take an objective, another platoon coming forward to try and reach an objective, and the difficulty for a stretcher bearer team of trying to recover a wounded colleague and on, try to get them back forward, to the aid on. post. They found the difficulties even on a dry day, even in nice pristine conditions. They found how hard it is, let alone with somebody lobbing one of these at you and giving you a hard time. What makes a surgery and treatment tool different to any other? Well, it's quite simple. In a conjunction with edXL, uh, Angley have been accredited to deliver this tour to support the history GCSE. It enables the children to have a more in-depth uh, view of how exactly casualties were treated during the 1418 war and can look at it from everything from uh, the treatment of wounds and injuries to simple things like the treatment of normal domestic diseases and infections that we take for granted in everyday life. Whilst this film shows a number of locations around the Ypres salient, we are delighted that edXL has endorsed our itineraries for two-day tours to both Ypres and the Somme, as well as our two-day tour which combines both locations. These tours will bring the topic alive for your students, helping them to visualise the more physical problems of the environment in a way which a textbook cannot. Here at Hill 60 we've introduced the students to uh, an individual infantry battalion. In this case the 4th Battalion, the Green Howards, the 19th Regiment of Foot. They served here at Hill 60 in February of 1916. And on the night of, uh, of uh, the 14th of February 1916, the battalion came under a heavy artillery bombardment from the Germans. This resulted in a number of casualties, and one of whom in particular, Private Robinson, we're going to follow through that chain of evacuation from his point of wounding, being recovered by the stretcher bearers, via the regimental aid post, to the advanced dressing station, and then on to the casualty clearing station. And we'll follow his treatment from the wounds he sustained and to the outcome of those wounds, whether he lives, whether he dies. And we'll talk about the repatriation process of our wounded and indeed how we deal with our war dead, giving the students a more rounded uh, and personal uh, view of how indeed we deal with our casualties during the First World War. That we utilise the equipment that a medical corps stretcher bearer had at his disposal to treat with a casualty. This bag is filled with all the tricks of the trade that a, a stretcher bearer had at his disposal to treat a casualty. And the beauty of this tour enables us to bring the children in at close quarters with, with this equipment, let them have hands on, physically see it, touch it, smell it, and have a, more than just a verbal description of this, of this piece of equipment. So when it comes to them doing their exams later on down the line, they can actually visualise the, the, the piece of equipment that they've used and can interpret that into words on a paper. This tour, Surgery and Medicine on the Western Front, has been invaluable for the students' understanding and contextual knowledge of what it was like on the Western Front during World War I. The guides are very informative and have great knowledge of all of the things that the students need to know for the new GCSE. I'd highly recommend this trip.